Hello and welcome back to another F1 fantasy video with me, Tom. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my team selection thoughts ahead of Singapore um, and a little bit of news towards the end of the video. So if your curiosity is the type to kill a cat, then you might want to skip to the end to jump on the brand new exciting news. But in the meantime, I'm going to be talking about my team selection. Um, so yeah, we're going from Monza, the temple of speed, to Singapore, the temple of doom. <laughs> it's I say that because it's a complete contrast to Monza. We've gone from Monza, super high speed, all about the straight line speed, doesn't care about downforce, and then we've gone to the complete opposite end of the scale to a kind of a, a Monaco style track in Singapore where it's going to favour other teams to what Monza, Monza presented with us. So um, yeah, lots of slow corners, slow medium speed corners. They have, there is a little bit of a track alteration which should speed things up slightly, um, but overall it's still going to be a pretty tight twisty track. Um, you know, third, fourth, fifth gear, Oh, back drop it that down to sort of second third gear oh, up third fourth gear can we get to sixth gear no it's gonna be one of them so yeah um team selection this week uh, for me personally i think is quite straightforward however you know things are never quite quite clear until it's actual race day or whatever but obviously we're gonna have a look at fp1 fp2 fp3 as per usual because that's important information um for sort of cementing ide ideas that we have pre-practice sessions and these ideas over the next few minutes are what I think pre-practice sessions so we're going to get into it straight away this is my team at the moment this was left over from from Monza um, I, I didn't actually run this in Monza if we pop back to completed I ran I, I ran limitless last last week out last week out last two weeks out whatever it was in Monza um, and basically i just felt like the time was right so i went for it and it paid off handsomely so yeah we've shot up the rankings quite nicely um into where are we into the top 3000 um in the world which i'm very happy about just makes me wonder like if i'd use the triple drs back in austria could be like in the top few hundred i'd imagine which would be pretty sweet but nevertheless i am not going to be you know scoffing at my current rank i'm not going to take it for granted whatsoever because i anticipate i will drop um to some extent because there are other people who have a few more chips than me i've got three left i've got um the triple drs boost still to go which is going to be like the big ace up the sleeve going into the couple of sprint races in a few weeks um i've got the wild card which might gain me like four or eight points basically so it's not really much good and the other chip i've got is autopilot and autopilot is something i've got on my mind um going into into this week so i'll discuss that shall i discuss it now this is what i did in my last one i started talking about team selection and went straight into chip usage uh, should we just dive straight into chip usage because because why not um yeah fine so chip usage in singapore i don't have no negative I've used that way back in Australia when, admittedly, there were quite a few DNFs and I feel like, oh, quite justified in using my no negative chip, even though it gave me zero points. <laughs> um, but yeah, it gave me zero points and obviously, with hindsight, I wish I'd held on to it. And if you have still got your no negative chip, I feel like there may not be a better opportunity to use it for the rest of the season than Singapore. Many DNFs historically here, quite a few, I think six or seven DNFs here last, last season, if I remember correctly. Um, rain affected there is a little prospect of some rain potentially this weekend because it's 2023 and there's rain every weekend apparently um, so yeah um, no negative could certainly be uh, a really useful chip um, this this weekend if you've got it tight twisty like I say street circuit very easy to stick it in the wall uh, high temperatures could see some engine problems who knows so yeah if I had if I had no negative I think I'd be I'd be spending it this week alternatively if you don't have no negative like me autopilot is potentially an option as well um if if we think max just happens got a chance of dnf in which obviously you know every time you enter a race you've got a chance of dnf but is there more of a chance of max dnf in, in this race then probably yes but you know i think when we think about it the red bull should still be by far the strongest car around here even with the whole technical directive 18 whatever it is called um coming into play with the whole you know flexi front wings and all that sort of thing which may affect some teams um and, and the the floor changes as well could could impact red bull so we could see max verstappen maybe not being like 30 seconds down the road maybe he's only 25 seconds down the road who knows but i do think red bull is still gonna be stronger so i'd probably rather use autopilot on a sprint race when it's a bit more uh, competition potentially from the likes of mercedes around brazil so i might be holding my autopilot for brazil potentially 
but I can still see a strong argument for also using it around Singapore when, like I say, uh, higher risk than usual of DNF. And if we think Max Verstappen is finally due uh, a poor race, like surely he's overdue. And if you're looking at all the predicted averages across the season of, you know, DNFs and stuff, surely Max Verstappen is due a DNF. He can't just win everything, can he? Can he? Um, I don't know. But that's kind of more speculation as opposed to um, any real um, basis for, for for using the autopilot chip. So I feel like autopilot chip this weekend is more of a safety belt than a rocket launcher, if that's a metaphor I can use. Um, whereas if I use it for a sprint race in Brazil, it could be more of a rocket launcher. This is a terrible metaphor, but if you get my drift, um, autopilot for a sprint race could be more um, gaining points, whereas autopilot for Singapore could be more kind of safety points and not actually gain you that many so i'm kind of leaning away from using any chips uh at the end of, at the end of this summary of me blabbering about chips but if i had no negative i'd be very tempted to use it this weekend um past that let's have a look at actual team selection so like i said i used a limitless chip last week or two weeks ago in monza um so it's reset me back to my original team before i made all my subs um, so this is what I'm, I'm left with all the way back from like Zanvort days, which already feels like a long way away. So 4.2 million in the bank, bags of cash sitting around. Shall we put it to good use? I think we probably should. Because I think that I can now finally, with my two free substitutions I've got here, um, could quite happily just go back to, or say go back to, finally utilise the triple Red Bull, triple McLaren. And with some, with some cash to spare as well, like we made some good gains over the last couple of weeks, which has enabled this to become the dream again. So I could go straight in with Guan Yu Zhou and go with a team like this. I am kind of more tempted though, to be honest, to go in with Yuki Tsunoda or even, even Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson, sorry. Um, I do think the Alpha Tories look good. There's, I've seen something on Twitter about the Alpha Tories bringing some Red Bull style upgrades. I mean, nothing new there. Everyone wants to copy Red Bull. Um, but you know, with, with Alpha Tory trying to get closer to Red Bull going into next year. Um, maybe Red Bull have already filtered through some some uh, car designs for them, so maybe we'll see um, the Alpha Tories looking a lot stronger. And Sunoda, who's had a good season so far, could definitely be a good shout for me personally. Obviously, not everyone has the same budget as me. Um, if you've not got this budget, then I can definitely see potentially dropping someone like Lando Norris potentially. Or if you want to keep Lando Norris, you could drop Piastri down to another budget driver. Um, you can sort of double up on, uh, for example, Guan Yu Zhou. I don't particularly like the double budget driver, particularly around Singapore, because um, you know the, the risk of DNF is already great, and the budget drivers just don't offer many points to score as it is. So if I was going to go with a team like this and I didn't have the budget I had, I'd probably keep Piastri. Imagine you've got like five million less, that leaves you with ten million still. You could quite happily put in someone like an Alpine, for example, or if you really want Lance Stroll, although he's not on great form at the moment. So you, I mean, yeah, with a budget way less than what I've got, you can still go with a team like this, which looks really solid. But for me personally, because I've got the budget, I think it kind of makes sense to lock in this triple Red Bull, triple McLaren build with a decent budget enabler in the face of Yuki Tsunoda. I say the face of Yuki Tsunoda, and I've already mentioned him, Liam Lawson has grabbed grabs some attention for sure in, in terms of fantasy managers. That said, he's still only 1% owned compared to everyone else who's like <clears throat> 10, 20, 30 or plus percent owned or whatever. Um, but yeah, I do think um, Liam Lawson's certainly one to watch. And if it wasn't Singapore, if it was pretty much any other track to be honest other than like Monaco maybe if it was a, a less dangerous track um, something more known to someone like Liam then I think I'd be very very tempted to put him in because he's looked so assured and that's I say he looked assured we haven't seen much footage of him because let's face it the the TV directors just love focusing on first second sort of battle which is kind of fair enough it would be nice to see a bit further down the field every now and again and Liam Lawson has certainly impressed picking up 24 fantasy points in his first couple of races very very impressive um, he's he's looked confident. He's 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 looking like what like De Vries should have been doing earlier on in the season, if you like. What Ricardo will hopefully be doing when he comes back, if he comes back, maybe Liam Lawson is going to do so well. They don't want Ricardo back, but I don't think it's going to happen. But yeah, I do think Liam Lawson is like uh, you know um, some hot some hot pr uh, property for going forward. So I do think Liam Lawson certainly some food for thought. Um, but I think going around Singapore. Yeah, after you've only ever had like two F1 races is uh, yeah it just makes me a little bit concerned not that I don't like 
well, I suppose it is I don't trust him. I was going to say it's not that I don't trust him, but it's, it's because he needs to like gain that trust fully. So I'm not going to talk too much more about the budget option because the budget options are generally kind of boring. But I do think going forward, maybe past Singapore, um, Liam Lawson could certainly be that budget enabler. And only at 5 million, he's now one of the cheapest assets if we sort this by value. Um, yeah, only Hulkenberg and Logan Sargent, who are only fractionally cheaper, are cheaper. So he's the third cheapest asset in the... In the um, in the game and I know Ricardo is supposed to be coming back in a couple of races but in the meantime Liam Lawson certainly looks pretty assured and pretty good value at five million so I could definitely see some teams uh, popping him in there let's get him in there for for the sake of it so yeah this is probably going to be my team going into going into Singapore um, however you know there is the the chance that Aston Martin also are going to be back stronger however again this technical directive I've been reading more probably do, doing more reading than is doing me any good to be honest about this technical directive and how it might affect Aston Martin because of their their wing they have to change their front wing which is why they've had a dip in performance recently and now the technical directive is actually coming into force in Singapore we could see some teams for example Mercedes um, out um, Aston Martin potentially even Red Bull and it could affect anyone the truth is we just don't know until we start seeing some cars on track we see some data we see some lap times we get some feedback from the drivers and the teams we truly just do not know how this technical directive if at all is it actually going to impact um, the run-in whatsoever but you know it's in my mind that Aston Martin could certainly be one of the teams that are quite affected by this however that said, Fernando Alonso is Fernando Alonso, and I do think that he's definitely worth consideration. And like I say, because I'm already open to the no negative, I could see edging my bets a little bit and cutting out maybe one of the McLaren assets and sort of go in for someone like Fernando Alonso. Again, if you've got the if you haven't got the budget of me, maybe Fernando Alonso is a good little cut price, a couple of million cheaper than Lando Norris, and you could go over a team like this. I'm just going to pop um, Sonoda back in for now because I'm still leaning more towards Sonoda um, at the moment. Um, yeah, so you could certainly go over a team like this. I do think Aston Martin certainly should be in in our minds, if even if they should be sort of further to the to the back of our minds. I think because mainly because of Lance Stroll and his lack of performance over the last few races, um, he's done all right in the first part of the season, but he's really tailed off recently. Just not getting the performance out of that car, kind of settled back into how he's been driving for the last couple of years when the Aston Martin wasn't as good as it is now. Um, so I think if we're going to get Aston Martin assets, obviously depending on practice sessions, if they're absolutely storming through in FP1, FP2, etc., then maybe we need to think more heavily about Aston Martin. But uh, Fernando Alonso is certainly a driver in my, in my fantasy mind, so to speak. But for me personally, I still think I'm leaning more towards the, the triple off of McLaren just because I have the luxury of being able to afford it at the moment and i feel like going forward it could just be the best team and it, even though it's kind of a high risk strategy because if there's a dnf it's going to double up in my team you know if piastri dnfs for example then i get minus 20 for piastri minus 20 for mclaren suddenly i've dropped like twenty thousand places which would be quite upset and having now reached the heights of the top three thousand people really like damn um but however it could be a case for me just go triple triple red bull Go triple McLaren, get that budget driver in there, clench my bum cheeks, hope to survive the weekend of Singapore, come out the other end with hopefully a decent score. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. So those are kind of my, as usual, jumbled thoughts that have just spilled out into this video. I hope they've been useful to you. In terms of the news, which I referred to earlier, um, the news is that I'm going to be joining up with the guys from FanAmp um, this week, and I'm going to be a guest on their show. Um, we're recording this Wednesday. Um, so if you've not already subscribed to FanAmp, then head over there and you can catch me whenever they decide to upload that. I'd imagine either Wednesday evening or Thursday, maybe it will crop up on their channel. Um, so yeah, head over to FanAmp and check me out because I'll be talking even more about F1 Fantasy um, in a couple of days time um, from recording this. And to be honest, I haven't actually confirmed as of the time of record, um, recording this right now, but I think I might also be doing their live stream, like deadline stream on their channel this coming weekend for Singapore as well. So if you want even more of me, you crazy people, if you want to listen to more of my fantasy thoughts, then yeah, tune into FanUp um, later on this week and catch me catch me there so yeah those are kind of my my bit of news it's nice to branch out a little bit and connect with the community and yeah it'd be kind of interesting being being a guest on the show so i'm looking forward to that very much um yeah that's kind of it for me for now um i'm sure there's loads of stuff i could talk about but if i haven't haven't covered it in this video i'm sure i will cover it in the videos over on fanamp so yeah thanks very much guys for, for listening to me wattle on this evening um and I'll catch you later on in the week, hopefully. So yeah, catch you soon. Good luck, everyone. And bye for now.